I'm Thomas Woodhouse, Chaplain of the Queen's Chapel of the Savoy. Welcome to this podcast for the Sunday next before Lent. The cantor this week is Gareth Trester. Tim Hamilton has edited the podcast and the lessons are read by Nicholas Windells, the Duchy of Lancaster's financial controller. My thanks to them. The anthem is Sheep May Safely Graze. Words by S. Frank, music by J.S. Bach. Welcome. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. 
So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Here ends the first reading. The Lord, even the most mighty God, hath spoken and called the world from the rising up of the sun unto the falling down thereof. Out of Zion hath God appeared in reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves and he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them and there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them any more, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. 
Here ends the second reading. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his for the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect of the Day, and for Peace, and for Grace. Almighty God, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. O Lord, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, 
who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that which is right in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of intercession. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, the high and mighty King of kings, Lord of lords, the only ruler of princes, who does from thy throne behold all the dwellers upon earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our most gracious sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and do her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live, strengthen her that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies, and finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God of love, who in a world estranged from thee to send forth thy Son to turn mankind from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to thyself, the living God. Overcome in us, we pray thee, all pride and self-will, and remake us a people in whom thou art well pleased, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, Heavenly Father, whose every motion towards us springs from thine inexhaustible love, enable us, we humbly beseech thee, cheerfully to sacrifice ourselves for the well-being of those with whom we have to do, and also to love them with the tender love which thou hast for the world. That so Thou now we see thee darkly through the veil of our blindness. We with them may presently see thee in the fullness of light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we stand on the verge of Lent, we pray in the words of the cross. Almighty God, who has shown us in the life and teaching of thy Son that the path of love may lead to the cross and the reward of faithfulness may be a crown of thorns, grant us grace to take up our cross and follow Christ in the strength of patience and in the constancy of faith to have such fellowship with him in his sorrow that we may know the secret of his strength and peace through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we continue in prayer, so we listen to the anthem, Sheep May Safely Graze.
now may I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When approaching the scriptures, we do so most often from one of two ways. The academic path, via commentaries and biblical studies, or through a personal encounter with the words, an an encounter that can change you forever. And both have validity and importance in our tradition. We discover in the first book of Kings, in the second book of Kings, that the relationship between Elijah and Elisha begins when Elijah found Elisha ploughing and throws his mantle over him, signalling to him to join him on his journey. That relationship is now reaching its climax, and confusingly, it appears that Elijah, who in that first book of Kings desires Elisha to be with him, seems to be wanting to rid himself of his protégé. Stay here, Elijah keeps telling him, for the Lord has called me to Bethel, to Jericho, to the Jordan. Stay here while I make my journey alone. Elijah refuses, instead making the journey with Elijah and in each place witnessing to prophets speaking of Elijah's departure. This is an emotional journey, a journey full of endings and yet with new beginnings. Elijah's ascension seems to have been common knowledge among the prophetic community, although no commentator really knows why he was afforded the honour of ascension. That remains a mystery. This farewell tour is very deliberate. Bethel plays an historical role in the religious imagination of the Jews. Jericho played a pivotal role in their battles. And at the Jordan, Elijah parts the water, reminiscent of Moses leading the people out of slavery. Finally, as if the testing is complete... Elijah passes into heaven, his mantle falling once again onto Elisha. For me, the very same story has a very different meaning. When I was a teenager, the minister of the chapel I used to attend Malcolm Fraser retired. He was by then a very old man, having come out of retirement to look after Clipston Baptist Chapel. And on his last Sunday, we were bidden to say farewell to him, but he was quite frail and emotional. And so we went one by one into uh, the vestry. And when I had my turn to go in, he said, Thomas, this is an Elijah and Elisha moment. I cried and he cried. I never forgot Malcolm or the Christian tradition he inhabited. And I continue to experience my ministry as one shared with others. Indeed, my imagination is at its best in the company of others. It was, though, a very personal encounter. It was an encounter that had a transforming effect on my life. Although I confess that at the time, I was not as well acquainted with the story as the commentators and biblical studies 
has allowed me to get. On Wednesday, we begin our Lenten journey. If anyone tells you they are giving something up, or you should give something up, you have dispensation for one year to say that you've given up enough already. But Lent will remain a time of preparation, an invitation to find ourselves in the greatest story ever told and to invite others into the story with us. Both before and after the Transfiguration, Jesus talks about suffering and death. The disciples have the sober experience of Holy Week in their ears as they witness to Jesus' glory with their eyes. All Peter, James and John know for certain is that they must follow Jesus, that hearing his words is to hear the word of God. Transfiguration is like that. Jesus shows rather than tells. He never sits his disciples down and explains who he is, but he leads those who are ready to the place where they will know it for themselves. As I say, it was several years before I was ready to inhabit the words of Malcolm Fraser. But I will never forget his actions of kindness and generosity in pointing me to the glory of God. I am the way and the truth and the life, and I have set you free, not to live in the labyrinths of regret, but for all that cannot be changed. God's love has a present and a future and an eternity that we do not lose heart. Only God's love can engender love, costly love, stronger than death. We are to look up and we are to see his face. We are to look up that we might be transfigured as his mantle falls on us. Amen. So may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.